I'm Peter and uh, I grew up down the road in Guildford. Um, I spent my youth getting muddy on the Helena River and I became fascinated by the plants and animals, uh, and particularly the insects. This led me to study environmental science at uni, um, which led to completing a PhD in ecology at the University of Western Australia. Uh, since then I've been working as an environmental consultant and mainly conducting fauna surveys. So during my studies I learned about climate change and biodiversity loss and overpopulation, but I didn't really get the scale of these issues until I read Tim Flannery's book, The Weathermakers, in 2007. Has anyone else read that? I don't know. Where is he here? Yeah, so a few people. And so I can still recall um, sitting in bed late at night, halfway through the book, and uh, I was unable to sleep because I was terrified about the future. Um, would I have a future? And uh, would my kids have a future if I chose to have some? So I clicked to the last chapter on solutions, and that was okay, but it uh, wasn't quite enough. And for a while there, I didn't really know what to do, and in hindsight, I was probably a bit depressed. But the first action I did take was write a letter to the editor, uh, the West Australian Pressing and Climate Skeptic. Unfortunately, it didn't get published, but that led me to, to um, down this path where I've ultimately ended up here. So. I took further actions uh, like joining GetUp and I actually organised one of these forums at the last federal election. I co in 2010, I co-founded a local sustainability group called Transition Town Guildford. Some of you may have heard of it. Uh, Transition Towns is a movement that came out of the UK which looks at addressing climate change, peak oil and uh, economic uncertainty at the local grassroots level. And I was always a great supporter, but I didn't become a member because I felt uh, like Get Up, it was better to be non-partisan. That was until uh, Bob Brown retired and there was a lot of uh, commentary that the party would collapse. And I realised that I really needed to stand up for what I believed in politically as well. And I believe Greens are the only party that are serious about tackling climate change. I'm proud that um, the Greens have achieved a price on pollution a clean energy fund for renewable energy, money for biodiversity and farmers, that thanks to the green, all children, Greens, all children will have access to dental health as part of Medicare from next year, and that as part of forming government, we ask for the creation of a parliamentary budget office so all, all the policies of all parties can be independently costed. And unlike the coalition, every one of our 100 plus policies for this election has been independently costed. So you can look at how much it will cost and where the money will come from. Last week, Green Senator Scott Ludlam presented our vision for Perth uh, in the future, WA 2.0 at the Octagon and UWA. So what would Perth and Hazlight look like in 2029 if we managed the transition away from fossil fuels beautifully? 100% renewable energy. Um, addressing the houses, housing crisis with affordable housing along transport corridors. A transport network that goes from anywhere to anywhere with heavy rail, light rail, rapid buses and safe bike paths. Justice reinvestment, so we address the root causes of crime and create safe communities. I believe the Greens are the only party who has a positive, caring and alternative vision for Australia and the future. Uh, so I thank you for the opportunity to speak to you today and I look forward to your questions and concerns um, about the election. Thank you. Thanks, yeah, I'm gonna have to disagree with Daniel. I think um, it's pretty clear and it has been for 20 years that climate change is real and it's been caused by humans and there's lots of evidence for that. Um, and uh, I think uh, some people might have heard a couple of months ago a study came out saying um, that if the Arctic melted it would cost the global economy $60 trillion. So when we talk about climate change it's not just about protecting the environment but it is about uh, protecting the economy as well. One of the issues which has been ignored in the debate so far is the health implications. Uh, Lancet, one of the most prestigious health journals, came out a couple of years ago and said climate change is the biggest health issue of the 21st century. So, um, and also, I guess some of the 
comments Daniel made about uh, it's going to ruin our economy and jobs, I think are completely ill-founded because in reality it's not a question of jobs versus climate change. Uh, addressing climate change will actually we create a lot more jobs. More jobs, that local jobs are created per a kilowatt hour in renewable energy versus fossil fuels, uh, coal and gas. The Greens policy, Scott Ludlam's um, done quite a detailed report with Sustainable Energy Now, uh, looking at could uh, the southwest grid be powered by 100% renewable energy by 2029. The conclusions of the study were yes, and they found it would cost only slightly more than business as usual, uh, mainly using concentrated solar thermal, which has salt storage so you can get 24 hour power even when the sun isn't showering, and also wind backed up with some biomass generation in the regions. So it's actually really good for regional areas and can create jobs in towns like uh, the Weepo where Colgar Wind Farm has been uh, just finished. And so people probably know the Greens have been very strong on the refugee issue and we believe that we should take a more caring approach. Um, something that changed my view on this several years ago, um, my dad's a doctor here in Midland, he's a rheumatologist. He came home and told me how he'd had a patient with a terrible shoulder and he was examining it and it was completely stuffed and he said, oh, what, what did you do? And the gentleman then said, I, I was uh, strung up by my arm and tortured for several days. So that, that story um, changed my view on, you know, profoundly on this subject. At the moment, the two major parties seem to think that the cooler you are, um, we can stop people from coming. But unless we're going to be more cruel than the conditions people of people are facing overseas, it will not act as a deterrent. The Greens policy is to resource the UNHCR in Indonesia and overseas to do their job so they can process people over there and to immediately increase the refugee to intake to 30,000 people um, with an uh, emergency intake of 3,500 people to relieve pressure in Indonesia where there are literally thousands of people stuck there with no orderly queue, with nowhere to go. So if we uh, accept them um, and show that there is a process that will stop people from getting on boats and risking their lives, which no, no party wants to see. Yes, likewise, the Greens have been um, very supportive of uh, recognising the first Australians in the Constitution, and it was a shame to see that just before the election that um, I think there was a tri-party sort of work on leading towards that, and that that was then used as a political football um, when Rudd came back in. Um, so I'd also like to highlight that now because of the work of um, Senator Rachel Seward, a great senator in WA in particular, that there's going to be um, non-sniffable fuels in, um, all across all of uh, remote Australia. And I think in the future in terms of um, policies, the Greens, as I mentioned, our justice reinvestment um, program, um, we need to look at um, supporting things like night basketball and on our patrol that can, um, and parenting programs that can help people. And contrary to our previous speaker's assertions, I think it's ridiculous to suggest that people are just bludgeoning on welfare. The reality is that New Start um, is 50 uh, is below the 40% uh, below the poverty line. So people who end up on um, benefits are just stuck in a poverty trap. The Greens have released a cost of policy, again Rachel Seward's work, to say that we would increase New Start by $50 a week and we would also uh, add $40 a week for single parents who are currently unable to, uh, you know, who also got um, dumped onto New Start um, by Julie Gillard. Senator Scott our Green Senator is up for re-election, uh, just released last week um, social housing initiatives, um, looking at uh, building uh, 100,000 houses over the next 10 years in Australia, um, and so I think also um, providing housing for people that are waiting on housing lists for up to 10 years is important. So this is an area Scott Ludlow has also been very proactive on, um, and he's been, um, with the Green support, the, the NBN, and they uh, we were in, involved in trying to improve that package, the 
um, the design, and I know that just last week the Australian Digital Frontiers or a, a digital group released their assessment, independent assessment of the different parties on their uh, digital platform, and the Greens uh, were ranked e equally best um, on that uh, in terms of protecting privacy online um, and, and the NBN project. I think there has been um, criticism of it saying it's costing too much, but the reality is it is infrastructure for the future and it will be important in um, low carbon economy of the future that people are able to um, make trans you know, transactions and businesses and medical things online. So yes, I, I definitely support that. So this is an area Scott Ludlum has also been very proactive on um, and he's been um, with the green support, the, the NBN, and they uh, we were in, involved in trying to improve that package, the um, the design. And I know that just last week, the Australian Digital Frontiers or a, a digital group released their assessment, independent assessment of the different parties on their uh, digital platform, and the Greens uh, were ranked e equally best um, on that uh, in terms of protecting privacy online um, and, and the NBN project. I think there has been. Um, criticism of it saying it's costing too much, but the reality is it is infrastructure for the future and it will be important in um, low carbon economy of the future that people are able to um, make trans you know, transactions and businesses and medical things online. So yes, I, I definitely support that. There is, we are facing an ageing population. Um, the baby boomers, and I think more broadly we need to have a discussion about um, how we live our lives. So I heard recently a suggestion that uh, when we're young and perhaps my age and we've got kids, people are working long hours and not get, you know, they want to work less to spend more time with their kids, but as people age and their, their, uh, their kids have left, they actually want to continue working at the moment. There's a lot of older people that want to work and they, there's um, ageism in the workplace, um, there's discrimination and they're not allowed to. The Greens have released some policies to support training um, and employers to allow people to work longer in the workforce. Um, the, the federal government did release the Living Stronger, Living Better package about aged care reform recently uh, and the Greens believe that was a good start and we were um, important in the Senate in adding um, amendments to that. And, but I think there is still further reforms to do. Some of the things uh, the Greens would like to see is dental care for all Australians as part of Medicare. Um, so, and as a priority, uh, we'd like, if we're um, uh, re-elected, we're going to be pushing strongly for dental care, not just to be for children, but for older Australians as a priority. And, uh, and then all Australians as part of Medicare, and also as the NDI, part of the NDIS, the National Disability Insurance Scheme, the Australians moved an amendment to uh, ensure that over 65s were included in that. Um, Labor, and the, <laughs> Labor and the Coalition didn't support us on that, but we will be pushing for that in the future. Uh, and also, I think, um, it's important to um, assist people to age it at home and part of that Living Stronger Living pack, Better package is money to allow people um, different choices in, in uh, how, they, how they want to live. Thanks. Likewise, I'd like to thank everyone for coming down. It's fantastic to see so many people here on a weeknight. Um, I'd, I'd like to ask um, two things. One is um, the Greens, we have a, a 150 cost of policies this election. I haven't been able to mention you know, barely any, any of them tonight. If you'd like to know anything else, go to the website, greenswa.net.au. You can find them all there. There's simple sort of two or three pages on uh, every different topic. So find what interests you and check that out. And secondly, um, not only the lower house, obviously I'd like you to vote for me and your preferred party second, but I'd like you to think about the Senate uh, in particular. At the moment, our Green Senator Scott Ludlam is up for re-election. Uh, if he loses his seat and Tony Abbott forms government, um, he could control both houses of parliament. And our system wasn't really designed for one party to control the whole parliament. So I'd really like you to think uh, and consider voting Greens in the upper house for Scott Ludlam. He's done a lot of work on renewable energy, uh, transport, sustainable housing, 
and uh, it is so important to have that independent voice, checks and balances in the upper house um, to hold the other parties accountable. Thank you.